Hi, you've clicked on to Saturday evening's special tropical tidbit for Hurricane Irene. I apologize for the audio echo that you are undoubtedly hearing. I'm having a hard time finding good places to record in quiet, so that's why it sounds that way. We're looking at Hurricane Irene here, IR satellite. She's now moving up the eastern seaboard. The core of the storm here, the center, is now moving up east of Virginia and southeastern Maryland. We can see that the convective tops have weakened quite a bit, and we're now seeing much... Um, smaller thunderstorms developing with this as we would like as we tend to see as these storms move up the eastern sea we're now beginning extra tropical transition to some extent and showing a lot of warming cloud tops which in a sense is good news but the storm is not really weakening that much and we'll talk about that in a second this is the radar presentation from Irene here. The loops are not working too well. I apologize for that also. Lots of difficulties this evening. The core of the hurricane is right here. Still a Category 1. Just now came off of northeastern North Carolina back out over the water. The eye filled in with precipitation over the outer banks here earlier is now trying to maintain some sort of a structure in here as it moves out over the water. But the water up here is a good couple of degrees colder than the Gulf Stream down here and thus there's not as much energy available for this to ramp up. You can see all sorts of dry air is getting into the the eastern side of the circulation here choking off the rain bands to the east of the eye. Most of the heavy precipitation is getting focused to the northwest of the center. Lots of rain has been falling down over North Carolina. Amazing amounts of rain. Peak winds that we've seen, the highest report that I've seen was down at Cedar Island, some here, somewhere here on the Outer Banks. Sustained winds of 90 with gusts to 115 miles per hour at one point when the eye was moving in to this area and we've seen numerous reports of hurricane force gusts all up through this area even back towards richmond virginia we had a wind gust recently up to 71 miles per hour amazingly strong winds this far away from the center and we're having all sorts of rain and wind spread up now into maryland and delaware as well if we go up to the Delaware radar, yes, we need to use two radars to cover the extent of the storm. That's how large it is. We can see that the heavy rain doesn't stop in Maryland. It moves all the way up in a heavy swath from Maryland all the way up into southeast Pennsylvania through all of New Jersey and even getting up now into the New York City area. We can see the center of the storm down here again, weaker on the east side. And we're thinking about this again, like we talked about uh, for the last couple of days, the heaviest rains are going to be in the northwest quadrant. Think of this like a nor'easter. The northwest quad is going to be the strongest part. We've been used to seeing the northeast quad be the strongest part of Irene, but with the baroclinic influence that she is now feeling, the northwest part of the storm is going to be the strongest. And rainfall totals here have just been amazing from North Carolina all the way up through Virginia. These dark reds here indicate greater than six inches estimated by radar. And these purples and lighter grays and greens over here in the middle of southeastern Virginia and northern North Carolina indicate amounts of 10 to 15 inches estimated by the radar and we have already seen several stations reporting well over a foot of rain in this area so Irene is dumping a lot of water and this is only going to continue as it spreads north rainfall of over five inches is already spreading up into southwestern extreme southwestern New Jersey all over into Delaware and into Maryland here Delaware actually already seeing storm totals of almost 10 inches in this area if the radar is correct this screenshot here is from Google Earth, the Hurricane Hunter data that most of you are used to tracking if you track this stuff. The Hurricane Hunter is on a pass right now. By the time I'm done with this video clip, it'll probably have passed through the center again. But look at what it measured. A vortex message right when Irene came off northeast North Carolina and here, 951 millibars. That is no change from 24 hours ago. When she was completing an eyewall replacement cycle north of the Bahamas, she has remained at the same central pressure for over 24, nearing 30 hours now over here. And I've never, I haven't been around that long, but I have never seen anything like this where a storm is weakening by all appearances, moving up with satellite and radar, radar presentation degrading and still maintaining a central pressure at 950 millibars, moving up the eastern seaboard towards Long Island, something I've never seen before for in terms of hurricane maintaining itself and by all appearances it should be weakening but it is not there are only a couple of reasons that there could be for this amazing that there could be but with this short wave up over southeastern Canada and Irene down here this jet stream is taking so much air out of this area that it must be allowing the air pressure to remain steady or nearly so as she moves out here a buoy a buoy just off the coast of Virginia measured a 
sustained wind of 60 knots with a pressure of 950.6 millibars, which is just amazing for a storm that just spent 10 hours over land and just exited the coast and is now moving north northeastward. Chances are she will eventually try to gradually weaken as she moves up towards Long Island, but she will probably still be around the 960 millibar range when she makes it to New York. We can see where the forecast track takes her now, right up along the coast of New Jersey and into western Long Island. This makes sense based on the radar over here. The motion generally north-northeast probably going to move right up the coast of Jersey and into western Long Island here overnight. And this is going to accelerate a little bit, but still we're talking about over 18 hours of tropical storm force winds for most of the people in this region. Her circulation is massive and we're going to see a lot of waves and storm surge based on the size of that circulation. These are the wave heights at a buoy east of Virginia Beach here has been between 20 and 25 feet of waves during the last several hours and this is the kind of stuff that's going to be rolling on top of what's already going to be a four to eight foot surge up in Long Island, New Jersey and up towards Cape Cod. These kind waves are going to be rolling on top could breach the sea walls as she moves up into into this area so we're going to be dealing with water damage both from storm surge and from rainfall extremely heavy rainfall will continue all through this area of the northeast a large swath of rain up on top of already saturated ground a lot of rivers are going to be flooded just about every single river in here will be flooded in major stage and we will have flash floods all over through here already getting flash flood warnings down through the areas that have already received almost a foot of rain from Irene. So this is going to be a storm that will be remembered folks. This is a 950 millibar hurricane typical of a category 3. Again I've never seen anything like this where the hurricane only has cat 1 winds, a category 3 pressure and is maintaining that amount of energy as she moves north northeast. There's a lot contained here and the issue is that we have a lot of winds above the storm that are stronger than category one force and I forgot to show you on the Google Earth image here these winds are all 70 to 80 knots at flight level which is about 10,000 feet up 8 to 10,000 feet up and look at this stretch if we measure from the eye all the way out to where the recon legs stop that's a distance of 180 miles out and they're still encountering 70 to 80 knot winds east of the center and they didn't even stop they probably could have gone out farther over 200 miles and found this these are registering at 50 knots at the surface based on recon measurements but as the storm moves ashore we could easily see some of those gusts come down over category one force as it moves into the New York City area and we could see some stronger winds than this as it comes ashore in random gusts and the Hurricane Center is showing that this will be a top end tropical storm, 70 miles per hour inland over Connecticut, basically still suggesting that this will be a minimal hurricane moving into western Long Island. That's what I think it will be. It's not going to lose intensity all that much. It's going to be slow to fill. 950 millibar hurricane is not going to be a tropical storm moving into Long Island. This is going to bring hurricane force gusts all into the big cities right in here. And folks need to be aware of this. This is a big storm that has caused damage down here and a lot of flooding. Some people took this to be something that wouldn't be worth dealing with properly and in a safe manner and I know some of them have regretted that so hopefully folks in here are not letting up on the storm. This is not something to take lightly. This is one that will be remembered for a long time on the list of great hurricanes that have moved up the eastern seaboard. You know the great names of the great hurricanes that came up the eastern seaboard, not many of them were stronger than a Cat 1. The 1944 Great Atlantic Hurricane was a Cat 1 in Long Island. Irene's going to be similar to that with a similar storm surge in New Jersey and New York City. So we shall see what happens, and everyone, please stay safe out there tonight. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.